Hi, and we're back with another edition of our GBiz 25 Digital and Social Media Online Lecture. Uh, my name is Professor Nick Carbonaro, and today we're going to be going over social responsibility, ethics, and privacy in social media, with social media. So again, hello everybody. My name is Professor Nick Carbonaro. You can find me at nickcarbonaro.com. You can find me on Twitter at NJ Carbonaro. You can find me on my YouTube channel, uh, uh, youtube.com forward slash Professor Nick Carbonaro. Today we're going to be talking about uh, social responsibility, ethics, and privacy within social media. And so not only from a professional standpoint, but a personal standpoint as well, and then also from your own brand image, right? So maybe businesses, social responsibility, ethics, and privacy, um, personal, all that type of stuff. So let's begin. So you can see here we have social responsibility, privacy, and ethics. And uh, what is social responsibility? And so if we look here and we say to ourselves, what is social responsibility? One of the first things that we see is this. Uh, what is it to you? So each person, the reason why I put that at the very beginning is because each person has a different viewpoint on social responsibility. Uh, social responsibility isn't stuff that is determined by a legal or illegal, illegal standpoint. So for instance, if somebody says, well, bad uh, online social responsibility is if you uh, commit a violent crime on uh, Facebook Live, right? Uh, that's bad social responsibility. Okay, that's illegal. So that's not considered social responsibility. When we talk about social responsibility, we are talking about things that, that are a gray area with whatever in perspective of right or wrong. So depending on your opinion, your beliefs, your morals, your values, everything like that, it could go either way. And so if we look at really what the definition is off of Wikipedia, an ethical framework which suggests an obligation to act for the benefit of the society at large. And so that, that obligation to act for the benefit of the society at large is really a subjective term. What is benefiting the society at large? Each, each political view, each religious view, each moral view, each uh, personal viewpoint on any topic of issue uh, would, would suggest that uh, what we think is a benefit of the society at large could help each other. So for example, in the real world, in the real world, and in, in not online, but offline, right? Uh, for instance, take uh, socialism, for example, right? Uh, proponents for it will say that, that you know what, it's better because we're, we're each according to his need, each, everyone according, uh, give to the, give based off of needs and then take based off of how much they've accumulated, right? And share the wealth and spread the wealth. But then the opponents would say, well, look at Venezuela, right? Venezuela is going through a huge problem and they, they were embraced by socialism. So uh, what benefits the society at large, right? And you can go back and forth and debate that and liberal versus conservative, Republican versus Democrat, right versus wrong, moral versus versus immorality, all those different types of things that, that are offline. Now we have to put it in an online setting. So with social responsibility on a platform, uh, when we talk about safety standards for a platform, what is considered safe, right? There's a fine line between safety and free speech. And so where do we cross that line and who determines that is really what we're coming at. Um, as you as an online citizen, you have to be aware of certain things, but what we're really kind of coming down to the point of uh, social responsibility is, is determining who's responsible for all the things that are out there on social responsibility on, on online. So whose job is it to make sure everyone is behaving responsibly, right? And so you may not have even thought about this, but we'll go through different uh, scenarios right now. So for the first one, the federal government. Uh, should the federal government be involved in regulating online uh, social responsibility? Um, should, the, should the federal government, Washington, D.C., be in charge of regulating online speech? Should it be in charge of how businesses regulate certain stuff? Should it not be in charge whatsoever, right? So who knows, right? These are some factors you got to start thinking about. Should, if, if you set precedent in one administration, then a new administration comes in that you either like or dislike, do you want those same rules applied to you? And so uh, start thinking about uh, who should be responsible for this stuff. Is it the state government's job, right? Maybe it's not the federal government. Maybe you believe in, in federalism and statism and stuff. And so each state determines what it is. So do the, uh, to the laws that apply in California also apply in Texas, New York, or is it kind of universal because online there's no really uh, determining factor between what is in one state or another because you're in a virtual setting. Who knows, right? But just remember this, like if, if something gets set up within one administration in the state, do you want another administration to have that same power? 
do you want them to limit that power? What what are those types of things? And if you talk about the state, it really goes it goes uh, further than that. So, uh, do you want um, when, when we're talking about state in in who's behaving responsibly and whose job is it to make sure people are behaving responsibly? I guess that's even a loaded question in itself because what is behaving responsibly even mean, right? So this is where we we talk about well whose job is it, right? federal state government is it businesses jobs is it your is it your job if you're going to be out there as a business is it your job to to self-regulate yourself on certain things on on uh online so being socially responsible that you could go on youtube and find like um company social media fails right so for instance um gap or old navy they're the same company they're the same ownership company uh during superstorm sandy a few years back in 2012 there was a, uh, they said, you know, they put online on a tweet, hey, you're gonna be stuck inside, might as well get some online shopping done, right? And it's like, they tried to push a thing during a during a crisis, during a, an emergency, and then to even think about like, well, do these even people have any power? They're sitting in water, like, should you be really trying to promote your business right now? And so should businesses regulate that or should a government say you, you can't do that, right? It all depends on your viewpoint. Platform creators. Is it the platform creator's responsibility? Is it Twitter's job, Facebook's job, Pinterest's job, YouTube's job to self, uh, to, to make sure that people are behaving responsibly, right? And that's where that fine line comes in. What's the difference between free speech and terms of use agree, uh, violation, right? Twitter's demonetizing a lot of people. I mean, uh, YouTube is demonetizing a lot of people right now based off of what's appropriate content, what's advertiser friendly or not. Well, who determines what's advertiser friendly or not? And so, that's in there. Twitter has safety updates, which you'll be talking about in a homework assignment. How's that play into it, right? So uh, businesses, platform creators, do, do they have an uh, obligation to make sure everybody's behaving responsibly? Parents, right? Is it the parent's job, right? Parents can only go so far. I know for me, as a parent, I have a four-year-old and, and I can be responsible. I'm 100% responsible for, for my kids up until they're the time they're 18, until they become adults. But up until that time, like, can you really regulate if your kids are away from school or, at, or away from home or at school or at a friend's house or or go on certain places? Um, if they go on social media, right? There's a lot of buzz around the, the term, quote unquote, cyberbullying, right? Again, cyberbullying has a different connotation, different people. Some people say, yes, you know, you're online and people pick on you and, and you know, you got to make sure that, that you're creating a safe space online. However, there's other people that say, listen, if, if you don't wanna get cyber bullied, don't be on the cyber rooms, right? Don't be on those platforms. You could always walk away from it. Now, if it applies to school and people are physically doing stuff you at school, that's again, that's not social responsibility. That's a whole different issue because that type of stuff is, is dealt with consequences through the school system. And so online, is there even cyber bullying? Online, is, is it the parent's job to regulate that? What happened if a parent is seeing a child being picked on online? Is it the parent's job to confront that student? And if it is, then are they in violation because they're now talking to a young kid online? What are the what are the parameters of that? So that even uh, goes into it as well. And then lastly, citizens are the users of social media. This kind of says it is everybody's deal, right? Is it is it everybody's deal? Is it your responsibility as the citizen? Uh, you have an obligation to self-regulate yourself, right? There are certain things within certain professions, with certain industries, that you can't say certain things based off of your your uh, your level at a, at a company, right? Your level at an organization. And so for you as the individual, do you have to say to yourself, is it worth me sending out that tweet if it costs me my job, right? These are private employers. Private employers don't, you're not under the same First Amendment rights as you are under for private employment. However, there is a gray line when it comes to social media because when you go online and you say stuff, are you representing you or are you representing the company? And so that's why if you're the user, there's certain things that you can do. So for one, in your profile descriptions, if it's your personal account, say, this is my personal account, nothing to do with my employment, right? That way it exempts you from that from that employment. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know what the precedent is with certain case laws and stuff like that. However, it is a gray area right now, and probably that's the best way for you to do it is to distance yourself from the organization and say, all views here expressed are mine and mine alone. They do not reflect my employer. So that way it's not on the employer's um, that's why it's not on the employers. A lot of people that you see online getting fired for certain things, or you see a kid videotape a teacher in a classroom talking about uh, something that's inappropriate or whatever, and they get fired. Yes, you have freedom of speech to talk about uh, freedom of uh, teaching to, to 
to talk about whatever sources you want, but it has to relate to the material, right? If you're an organization, you want it to relate back to the material so that you're able to connect that. When you start going off on tangents that don't really connect with the subject matter you teach, then you get in trouble right there. Or if you're an employer and you and you or if you're an employee and you start saying stuff on behalf of the company like this is what I do at my work so it should be good here that's when you start getting in trouble because you put your employer into the situation right you leave everything separately you should be good however it's still a gray area because social media is so still uh, social media law is still technically brand new so are these rule are there rules and or consequences for demonstrating social responsibility so with all these different platforms does the federal government not only talk about who makes it responsible, but are there consequences for the federal government and how they how they use social responsibility? The state government, how they use social responsibility. So, for instance, when a Hurricane Harvey was going on, I believe one of the mayors, the mayor of Houston or or somebody within that area, journalists within that area were saying, oh, don't worry about it. It's not going to be that bad. OK, well, that's their freedom of expression to say what they want. But however, if you're a reporter, if you're a government official and you're telling people, oh, it's not going to be that bad, and then one of the most devastating natural disasters happen in, in our modern era affects you, was that responsible for that person to go out there to say something that they technically don't know about, right? And so you do have a freedom of speech, but just because you have it doesn't mean you use it all the time. And so those are some instances of what we do. And the reason why we talk about this, the reason why we want to know who's in charge and who's responsible for all this, because it all leads down to being an ethical citizen, right? Just like I said, um, if a journalist tweets something out that's factually not there, right? I, I could tell you many instances where journalism, journalists, Nobel Prize, with people that are, that are high up, tweet a false fact on purpose to get a bunch of retweets out there, to get a bunch of likes, to get a bunch of shares. And then they go back like two hours later and then correct themselves and it barely gets any views because people are, the damage was already done, right? Once you say something, you can't unsay it. Same thing happens in social media. Once you put something out there, you can't undo it. Yes, you could delete it, but a screenshot lasts forever, right? And so are you being an ethical citizen? Just because you can do stuff, should you do that type of thing? And so is the internet inherently unethical or does it simply make it too easy for users to act immorally? And so we have such like torrent sites, right? Uh, entertainment, music, television. Do you burn? Do you burn uh, those movies from on on the disc from uh, from those places? Software apps. Do you do you get stuff illegally? Do you share passwords? Right. HBO Go, Netflix, Hulu. Do you rip off a uh, Microsoft uh, Office and and steal it uncopyrighted? Uh, 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 you you take it from somebody else. So all these things are being ethical citizens, right? Uh, sharing a password it's nobody's gonna put you in jail for sharing a password however right uh, Netflix sets it up with profiles so that people don't act unethically right so the bit so the business platform and the platform creators actually made themselves more socially responsible maybe knowing that hey this is how the majority of our business is done where people share their passwords with each other might as well give them profiles for it right instead of trying to pull everybody away from it so um, which ultimately leads to and the reason why we even talk about being an ethical citizen being socially responsible is this is the reason why they matter because we have to deal with privacy we have to deal with privacy right it governs the decisions about your identity with whom you share information who can search for and find information about you and what information these people can find so on these platforms do you know that your information is being sold right your information is being sold if you don't pay for a service like facebook it's free to sign up you are, the, you are the product. If you don't pay for that product, you're the product. They're selling your information. They're selling your data. They're targeting you. And so who makes those decisions about the, the, the identity? Who can search for you and find information about you, right? What information can these people find? And then the ethics portion, which we kind of just talked about, it governs the decisions on how to use those tools, how to use them, when to use them, how much to use them, what social media tools to use to actually... Uh, to, to be a more ethical citizen, right? When you use a tool like Facebook Live, you know, there's there's benefits and consequences to a thing like Facebook Live, right? Benefits are you can get live streaming, you could be up to date with friends, family, you could share your business ideas. Negative, you could watch a kidnapping happen live. You could watch some devastating stuff happen live on Facebook. And so who is responsible for that type of stuff? Is it the users in the background doing the illegal activity? Is it the platform creator for allowing it to, to even be shown? 
right? Is it government for saying, you know, if we do that, you know, you get laws for posting it online, that type of thing. Who knows what they are? Maybe we need some, maybe we don't, and it all depends on you. None of this stuff is a legal versus illegal issue. It's very much subjective. And so if we look at privacy statistics, Facebook alone has over 1 billion, right? 2 billion active users and over 13 million of them have never touched their privacy settings. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever touched your privacy settings on Facebook? Have you ever looked at your privacy settings and said, oh, I need to make this post uh, private or I need to untag myself. Facebook has huge amount of privacy stuff that you could actually go through and determine the level of security on there. Here's some Pew Research polling from 06 to 2013. Right now that we're, these people are adults, we could actually see the data. Posting photos, 80 to 90% of people post photos online. 50 to 70% post their school name. 70% post where they live. 30 to 50% post their email address publicly. And then two to 20%, one out of every five people at most, post their phone numbers, right? And so think about that. Think about what, what we're saying right there is that all that information and by 2006 to 2013 and if we're in the year uh 2017 right now some of those people you know were 13 years old when they started out right 13 10 years ago 13 years old maybe they're now just becoming like in 2013 if they were 15 right now they're starting to enter their adulthood and we already have a bunch of photos of them we already know what school they went to we know where they live we know their email addresses we know their phone numbers people could steal your identity off of all that information right there People can uh, can can cyber stalk you. People can physically stalk you if they know your school name, where, where, who your friends are, right? There's an interesting uh, YouTube video out there of a person going up to people based off of searching on their Facebook profiles and stuff like that and actually going up to them and having full conversations about their entire life based off of the information that they actually uh, put out there. And so um, when, we, when we do these type of things, be cautious about who you're sharing that information with, right? Is it public information or is it private information? We're going to show you at the very end, I'm going to show you at the very end of this lecture, what you can do to actually uh, prevent that type of stuff from happening. More information than you intend to share. You can be identified with 87% accuracy uniquely using your gender, date of birth, and zip code, right? They can find you based off of that information 87% of the time, knowing exactly where you are, what type of person you are, um, what your interests are, what your hobbies are, everything like that based off of those three information, right? Gender, date of birth, and zip code. You can be uniquely identified by your browser with 97% accuracy. The browser that you use determines what type of person you are on social media. Information is share, sold in auction with your permission. Every time Facebook does an update, every time Twitter does an update, they say, do you agree to the user agreements, right? And usually we just scroll right through it and check it. Check yes. Well, we're going to go through that. We're going to talk about um, that's going to be one of the assignments later, is to go through a whole terms of service. Target determined a 16-year-old was pregnant before the family knew based off of search queries, right? So think about this. When you go to Google and you start typing in, let's say, uh, to, uh, let's say you want to talk about the Lakers, right? And so you type in Lakers and you start searching tickets or whatever, and then your family member or your friend comes on, on your computer and they load up Google and they start searching. And on the right-hand side of Google, you'll see like advertisements, you know? for Lakers and merchandise and sporting tickets and, and all that type of stuff. And if somebody didn't know, that if you never talked to your roommate, your roommate could probably tell, hey, this person's probably looking up to go see a Laker game, right? Well, that same thing happened. A daughter was on, on a girl was on a, on her profile pages and she was trying to see, you know, which one um, uh, baby information from Target, right? She's looking at all the information from Target and, you know, pictures and all that type of stuff. and. And what did she find out when, when her parents went on? They found out, oh my gosh, she's actually pregnant because they said, why is Target sending me coupons for, for maternity clothes? Why is Target sending me coupons for formula? All that type of stuff. So we're selling your information out there. You got to be careful about it. You know, we're not saying to, to be completely offline, but you got to be careful about it. Consumer data mining. So if you look at the consumer data mining, this is what they do. Things you like, uh, things you like is right here, right? They're looking at the things you like. They're looking at the places you were. And then they're looking at things you looked at, right? And the things you looked at is based off of your history on your search engines, your cache, meaning the storage of all your search and your search queries and all that stuff. Cookies, the traceable factors that could tell uh, people where you've been on each site. 
searches, uh, what you actually looked up, and then image capture, uh, pictures that, that you've actually captured. Those are things you looked at, right? Things you like based off of GPS, your location, geo data, geography data. So looking at um, of where you've been, photo analysis, looking at a photo and maybe seeing like Pepsi in the background on a poster of your wall, looking at that type of image, people you're with, who, who tagged you, what, who are your friends? Um, Beacon's not gonna get into that. Wi-Fi and self cell triangulation, they can pinpoint your accuracy with Wi-Fi and triangulation, right? Uh, places you were at, social media likes, what did you click on? What did you share? Again, cookies, click tracking, making sure, seeing what you've actually clicked on. What are your favorites? Who's referred you? Metadata analysis, seeing who your friends are, right? And now imagine billions of data points, right? Billions of data points. And so you can see here, if you combine these two, well, maybe it's you. If you combine these two, well, maybe it's you. If you combine these two, maybe, maybe it's you. But if you combine all three, it's highly likely you, right? Based off of all the information that's come into play. So. You just gotta be careful about that. And we're not saying don't be online. I'm just saying that that information's out there. So so give accordingly, right? Give accordingly. Um, privacy categories, right? We have public. So making sure that all your platforms are set up publicly. We have friends or followers, right? Or only, right? So this is, and mind you, we're going over broad sense because later on in the semester when, when I go through each different platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all those types of things, they each have their own privacy settings, which we'll talk about, but uh, public, um, people seeing you publicly, friends or followers only, right? Friends or followers only, those people that only follow you are only your friends on Facebook. And then lastly, locked or private accounts, accounts that are locked, meaning only you can see it or only people that, that have access to you can, can actually see. And so little, little uh, cartoon here. That's odd. I don't. I don't recall accepting a friend request from Big Brother '84. Right? Play on the the book 1984, Georgia Orwell, Big Brother. Right? And about internet privacy and stuff, and Facebook being like that Big Brother out there. And so, um, how can you protect yourself? So, the ways that you can actually go out there and protect yourself. No, number one, know your privacy rights. So, um, you can go look up each uh, the the internet's each state's uh, guidelines and stuff like that. Just with a simple Google search, you can find out what. Uh, what uh, social media privacy rights there are for you. Create your own private groups and lists. So on these platforms, like let's say if you have a family group on Facebook or a family list on uh, Twitter, direct messaging, you could, you could give that information out and it's private so not everybody's seeing an address for a birthday party, right? Not everybody's seeing photos of your family. So create your own private groups. Turn off the geolocation settings on your phone. So if you go to phone and you go to settings and you go to uh, uh, each, each, each phone is different. Uh, go to settings and look up the uh, the location services. And if they're on, that means it's it's constantly searching your data. You could t untag those so when you take a photo, um, it doesn't show up what city you're in when you do it. On each platform, you don't have to tag wherever you're at. Get rid of followers you don't really know. If you have followers on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram that you don't know who they are, why even have them following you? You never know who those people are. Set your social profiles to non-searchable. So. These social profiles have options to where you don't, where you can't search somebody. So, if you try to find me on Facebook, it's gonna, my name doesn't even pop up. Why? Because I'm non-searchable. Only the people that I want to add are on there. Search yourself. Do a Google search of yourself. Go and uh, put your name in quotations, right? Put your name in quotation marks. Put quotation mark, right? Quotation mark. Your name. Another quotation mark to end it. Your full name. And if you have a, a common name like a, like John Smith, right? What you would want to do is go through and um, maybe add like a birthday, like put a plus sign and then your, your specific birthday. Click search, then click images, right? See what pictures pop up. Do you want your employer seeing those pictures? Use two-factor authentication. So that means like you have a password set up and then they'll send you a text code as well to verify that password. That's the safest way as of right now to make sure that your information is, is saved properly. And so, what we're gonna be doing for the assignment this week, one of the assignments this week, is to read your terms of service, right? Read your terms of service. You're gonna choose a platform to read a term of service from that I've chosen. I've, I've given you like, like 12 different platforms. You choose one of them. And then you go through the assignment and you find out what do they own, what do they owe from you. And so when we look at this type of thing for this, uh, for this week, we have um, uh, privacy, social responsibility, and ethics. And, and what this all comes down to is your level of privacy and, and, and ethics. So 
for 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 me personally, I'm a public figure. I, I teach at Long Beach City College. There's some things I want private, right? I want my Instagram, I want my Facebook, those show more of my family relations, my 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 friends list, my 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 personal opinions on certain things. I want to keep that private, right? If I if I don't talk about those in my classroom, then I don't need to talk about those on my public profile, right? I have my own privacy. Everybody has a right to privacy. That is a thing that you have. You have the right. Some people might say, "Well, I don't do anything wrong, so I don't care." Well, who cares if you don't do anything wrong? Then 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 you should even be greater for your right of privacy because hey, you you didn't do anything wrong and you get that privacy. So it's not to just it's not to encourage people to do bad behavior. It's your right as as a First Amendment as a right. You have a right to privacy, right? And so you have a right to free speech. You have a right to privacy. All these different all these different amendments that we have out there for us. And so when when we're talking about that, yeah, that. However, I have a public profile as well. I have a public Twitter account. I have a public YouTube page. I have a public website, right? My website doesn't dive into political beliefs, religious beliefs, family beliefs, all that type of stuff. No, it sticks straight to my professional, right? Twitter can be a little different because it's personal and professional, but I don't do everything that I would do on my Facebook or Instagram with family members that I do on my professional Twitter profile. Everything relates to, to my uh, to my industry that I do. And so um, for you, it just depends on what level of privacy you want. Some of you may want super high level of privacy, right? You're not, you don't want people to know who you are. You want to just keep it for a locked account. You may be family members, and that's great. That's great. Some of you may want completely public. You want to get your posts viral. You want to get your posts out there. You want to make money as a business. If you're a business owner, you can't have a private account. Hang on, a private account as a business owner. You need you need people to, to search your product. So that's going to be need to be public. Well, once you do it, just know that you open yourself up to certain things, right? Meaning if you're a public company and you decide to tweet something stupidly because you thought you were on your Twitter account and not your public company Twitter account, that could backfire on you. And it should because a good business owner won't do those types of things. So when we, when we go through this, make sure that when, uh, when, we, when we look at all this type of stuff, that we're actually, um, that we're actually figuring out uh, what level of privacy we want, how, what type of socially responsible uh, person we're going to be out there in the, in the world, right? Who determines that social responsibility? Is it the government? Is it, is it state government? Is it you, your parents, your, 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 yourself, your businesses, the p- platform creators? And understand that each one has a consequence. And so with that, um, get started on the homework assignments. And if you're just watching this for the fun and joy of it, awesome, you know. Uh, come back, check out my page, like it, uh, like this thing, uh, share it, do whatever you need to do. But other than that, um, I will see you later. Have a great one and be that socially responsible person on social media.